So I made this video, maybe about a month ago, about my experience with the DMT beings. If you have taken psychedelics, maybe you've had an experience like that where you've come in contact with beings or spirits or guides or aliens or, you know, people describe them as so many different things, but this is a reoccurring theme with the psychedelic experience, typically in a ceremonial sort of, uh, in a ceremonial sort of fashion. For example, here in the jungle, people, uh, the indigenous people here have been taking DMT in a bunch of different forms, like ayahuasca. And these indigenous people also have the same kind of stories, you know, of coming in contact with the ancestors, the spirits. And to bring this all around, I had an experience like this uh, a few times, and I posted a video about it. And a lot of people said that uh, it sounded like I was possessed by demons, or like I was doing some sort of sorcery, or messing with something that I shouldn't be messing with. Uh, mostly Christians. Christianity is probably where that sort of context comes from. If you really look at spiritual traditions, you don't really see many sort of demons in this sort of philosophy of like an inherent evil that is always trying to overcome you. I personally uh, like to sort of look at these experiences through the lens of the cultures that use them for thousands and thousands of years. No doubt can you have an experience while on DMT that seems demonic. I actually had a friend who uh, could only describe his trip as being stuck in the infinite loop of hell. He said he was just stuck in this thought loop and he couldn't get out of it. He said death would be more satisfying than that. That was, he said this was like an infinite torture because when you're on these sort of, when you're on some of these substances, time, time doesn't really exist when you're on these kind of things. You know, a second can feel like an hour it's very bizarre. If you didn't watch my last video, I talked about one of the experiences I had here in the jungle where I came in contact with these serpents, these rainbow serpents that were dissecting my stomach and like clearing out these sort of negative energetic blockages I guess I had inside of my stomach and my torso. Uh, I made a video about it and I'll leave the link in the description so you can watch it. And a side note, something that I find really weird is that uh, the serpent is like a very potent reoccurring theme, especially here in the jungle. And I also had a serpent vision while I was on mushrooms here on this exact beach about a year ago. I have no idea what it means. I had a lot of interesting theories on the comment section of my other video, like Kundalini stuff or uh, Aboriginal Australians actually talk about rainbow serpents. And Mother Ayahuasca is usually regarded as a, as a serpent. And there's, there's so much serpent stuff that I just, I need to, I need to I, I'm still doing research and I'm gonna make a video about it. What I think demons actually are, I think demons exist as a reflection of our fears and of our desires. And they manifest themselves in, uh, in you know, whatever sort of, whatever we are afraid of while we're in these sort of altered states of awareness. That's where the idea of they feed off fear comes from, I think, because the more you play into that fear, the more stronger the, uh, the experience is gonna become, the more scary it's gonna become. You know, I've experienced this myself firsthand and uh, surrender, every psychedelic experience I've ever had, surrender has been a huge part of the trip, if not the foundation of it completely. Surrendering to the experience is what will allow you to have the mystical profound state that yogis speak about or these shamans speak about. I also think that these, that these demons manifest uh, in this realm, in the form of our insecurities or in the form of the negative traits that keep us anchored to our ego to our primal self, the thing that keeps us uh, unaware of our potential, of our divine nature. What could be more demonic than keeping you from knowing who you actually are? And I don't really believe in possession outside of like you believing something so much that it allows it to happen. Because you believe that it's possible, it makes it possible. You know, we do manifest our reality. I don't think it's necessarily that you allow it to happen because you want it to happen, but it's because you are unaware of your infinite potential to manifest and create your reality. This is all a projection of consciousness. This is all a manifestation of our thoughts. This external world doesn't actually exist outside of ourselves. It is an experience from within. So in that sense, these beings are real. They're just as real as you and me. I don't really know what that means or how far that realness goes, but they have just as much power as you allow them to have. Like we said, they feed off your negative energy. Your vibe attracts your tribe. But this, this is only a reflection of 
how far our ability to perceive can go. Because human beings by nature are so egotistical. We're so ego driven. We're so ego driven, it's hilarious. Human beings are so easy to empower or disempower. Like for example, I can walk up to somebody and I can be like, yo, you look so beautiful today. You look great. You look so great today. And they'll be like, they'll walk away feeling invincible and feeling so happy about themselves. Or I can literally walk up to someone and be like, you ugly, and it can ruin their day. Completely just ruins their day. I just think of my own life. If someone comes up and hurts my feelings, everything reflects that, you know? You see happy people walk by and you just roll your eyes. Again, it's because we are unaware of our infinite potential. People become possessed by the demons traveling through the intentions of our words. And it's because we don't live in reality. We don't live in reality. We live in some weird, distorted, version of reality that's constantly being filtered through all of our bullshit and all of our ego and all of our judgments. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says to Arjun that there was never a time where I didn't exist, nor you. This, uh, this realization reflects a realization that I had in uh, my trip. So if we take the position that somewhere inside of us lies something eternal, which most spiritual traditions do, take this belief. Even Christianity has this belief. You know, if we do good, we spend eternity with the Father in Heaven. So somewhere within us is that connection to the divine eternity, to the infinite. We are already connected to that somewhere inside of us. Regardless of uh, which mythology you want to buy into, it seems to me that, it seems logical that your essence is the same essence of everything else. You are inherently connected to the same mysterious point that everything comes out of, whether that be the Big Bang or whether that be God literally placing everything here. We literally all come from that mysterious point. And that mysterious point, each step along the way since the start can be traced back to that. And we are inherently a result of the first thing that happened. It's hard to explain. There's an eternal energy force that runs throughout all phenomena and you are inherently connected to it. Right now, you, you, sitting there watching this video, me making this video, this tree, these weird ass bugs making this weird ass noise. This is all an expression of your essence. You are a part of the entire energetic system of existence. But because we identify with these little weird bodies, we can't grasp anything higher than duality because, you know, we have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to do all these things, so we think that we are an individual. But this is the biggest illusion of who we are. And if you were living through duality, that means you are living life you're conceptualizing life into categories. So you look at things as good and bad based on your ego, based on your judgment of how the world works. Look at all these gosh dang ants right here. Basically what I'm trying to say is that our judgment doesn't allow us to understand objectivity doesn't allow us to look beyond ourselves, really. A curse to a fly is a blessing to a spider. There is no such thing as evil, only what our ego creates, which is not to be downplayed at all. Like I said, we do create our realities, and this is still real. Our individual realities are just as real as anything to us. I think people can experience genuine biblical demons on DMT. Like I said, I had a friend that experienced that. But that's because the context can only go back as far as we know. If our context to that experience is what the Bible taught us, is that, that that's demons. If you're tapping into a dimension of possession and Satan, then yeah, that's what we're gonna think we're tapping into. But that of course is not the case with all traditions. Within the spectrum of our ego's desires, there's always gonna be good and evil. Because as long as you are identifying yourself as an individual in the universe that has specific needs and desires and wants, then you're always going to look at things as being demonic or angelic or a curse or a blessing. The way I like to look at it is that we are actually just the universe playing out as an individual, as a way to explore itself. You know, we've all heard this, that you are the universe becoming aware of itself. That's true. You are literally the universe becoming aware of itself in the most literal sense of that phrase. This, this dirt and this tree may look different, but they are actually one. It's only our ego that makes them look different because we feel the need to break everything down into categories. But when we can just stop being this or that and just be, 
then we can understand that it is all one. There's no demons. There's no demons. There's no angels. There's only, there's only you. So I don't know, what were they talking about? Demons. Are there demons? As we, because we navigate through this platform of awareness, you know, the platform of our, our ego and our desires, then yeah, there is things that we consider good and bad. But beyond the realm of thought, there exists a transcendental realm where everything is harmoniously in bliss and we can experience that with surrender. If you're interested in understanding ego death, I made a video breaking down ego death into four different levels. Uh, I think you could potentially like it, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts about demons. Most of you, because a lot of you guys seem to think that I'm possessed by Satan. I don't know. Maybe I am. Click subscribe. 666.